Your Excellencies, uh, Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'll be very careful and I request to be allowed to stand on the protocols that were established earlier by my, my brother from the board. Uh, you know, from the experience that you had, I don't want to go through it. <laughs> so you'll, you'll allow me to take advantage. Uh, I just want to really express my gratitude to AHB for actually inviting me uh, to this uh, very important symposium. Uh, it is a great honor because this is a very important uh, event and uh, its contribution uh, to advancing women's health in Africa cannot be overemphasized. I have been listening to the speakers who came earlier, and they have actually done a very good job at uh, giving all the statistics that I wanted to share. But one of the things that stood out was uh, the outcome of the first symposium, which was held two years ago, which was the formation of the Coalition of Women's Health in Africa. And, uh, where even the co, the, the chairwoman, uh, you know, I've, I've been hearing about chairmen a lot. The chairwoman uh, came and addressed us here. And I think this is a very important outcome. I will be very keen, uh, first of all, to hear about uh, what the coalition has done so far. And I believe it is something that uh, we really need to look forward to, even as we move uh, into the future. I just want to take a few minutes to look at the landscape uh, of women's health in Africa and to be able to just reiterate the fact that uh, although we are making a lot of progress, but uh, we are able to see a profound catastrophe when it comes to the health of women. We have been told about all the statistics here, but I just want to single out one of the things that really break my heart, and that is the unacceptably high maternal mortality ratio, which we are experiencing today in this part of the world. We are losing upwards of 500 women out of every 100,000 women who uh, actually give birth. And it is so sad because this is a very critical element of life where somebody is condemned to death just because they are giving life. And it is not that it is something that we cannot intervene, but it is just because, understandably, we are not doing what we are supposed to do to forestall these unnecessary deaths. Because You'll find that out of every 100 women, 50 of them are not able to access antenatal care services. And this is a very important intervention that is supposed to help us mitigate these maternal mortalities. And then, when they are ready to give birth, 4 out of 10 are not able to access skilled but attendance. So you can imagine, and the statistic that was given for Europe compared to the one that we are experiencing in Africa, these two interventions, if we are able to obliterate that deficiency, can be able to achieve a very big difference in the, in the lives that we are losing uh, senselessly every single day uh, in, uh, in Africa. But all is not lost. I just want to say that, uh, and that's why I was very really excited when I heard about the formation of the coalition, and also when I looked at the theme of this year's uh, symposium, which says, A New Dawn of Partnerships for Women's Health. If we can be able to take advantage of partnerships that are at our disposal, and I want to underscore those who have said 
that we don't just look at a whole of government approach, which we are now really struggling to do in the private sector, and we are seeing a lot of good results out of that, but we extend it so that we are able to embrace a whole of society approach in dealing with these menace, then we will be able to see a very big change in the statistics that have been presented to us. We need to be able to come up with very effective partnerships and that will go a long way in trying to make sure that uh, we address this big problem. They also, they, there's also um, the opportunity for us to be able to take advantage of new approaches, innovations, like information technology, and that has already been touched on. Let us do that. You know, digital health issues around the digital revolution. Let us take advantage of that. We are able to achieve a lot. These are low-hanging fruits that uh, if we are able to tap into, then we will be able to see quick results. Now, I know that uh, the time that is available is very short, but I just want to appeal to the delegates who are here today that uh, after this meeting, I would really wish to be able to see some very clear, concrete actions which we can commit ourselves to. Because we've done an excellent job describing the problem. <laughs> Although there is still a bit of space <laughs> to continue refining the definition and the description. But then I think we also need to prov provide a little bit more energy and time to being able to come up with the how. How are we going to solve this issue? And even as we come up with those uh, actions, I want to propose something. And my proposal is around the importance of prioritizing women's health at policy level, at implementation level, and even at community level where the services that we are providing, the ones that we are determining at policy level, the ones that we are providing at implementation level are being consumed. I have lived through a metamorphosis where we could go and sit on the policy making table and we are all men. And we are discussing about issues of women's health. So, <laughs> but then I am very proud to say that uh, today, when we sit on the policy-making table in Kenya, it looks very good because our cabinet secretary is a woman. Out of our two principal secretaries, one is a woman, one is a man. Our director general is a man. At least we have one goal there. <laughs> And then out of the two deputy directors general, myself and my colleague, one is a man, one is a woman. Out of the directors, ten of them, four are women, six are men. So it's a nice balanced policy-making table. <laughs> I'd already said the minister is a woman. <laughs> the, minister, the minister is a woman. So when we sit and we discuss issues around maternal health, women's health, then you can be able to see that there is a very deliberate and intentional follow-through to be able to implement. And the policies that we are making today are increasingly supportive of women's health. That's why we can see that out of the average, the global average of about 150 maternal deaths, although Africa we are above 500 per, per, per 100,000, in Kenya we've been able to bring it down. Uh, to close to 300. We are still going down, and uh, we hope that we should be able to do much more. Now, I just want to uh, probably finish by saying this, and uh, I like that, uh, that uh, analogy of uh, Amit about 50% of the team, 50% <laughs> of the team playing. You know, you'll just lose because uh, if, if you are fielding six players out of 11, I don't know how you will win. And the ratio of men to women is one to one. So if we are going to now leave the women out at any of the levels, then we should expect that by fielding half of the team, 
uh, then we are going to lose. But I just want to maybe conclude by encouraging that uh, let us uh, continue with this dialogue. It's a very important one. It is not just about women's health. It is also about the knock-on effect because we are losing a lot. You know, when you look at the contribution that would have been made to our economies by these women who are spending most of their time battling with the inequitable uh, provision of services and sickness, then you can see how we are losing all of us, not just the women only, but all of us. So I want to express my optimism in uh, conclusion. Uh, my optimism, uh, optimism, optimism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I want to actually say that I'm very optimistic that uh, actually we are in the right direction and we should be able to make a lot of progress. We are not very far from the bottom. So one of the things that we can say is that uh, the most likely direction we can take is up. And so let's do this. Let us ensure that we provide the best health. Let's play our roles, each one of us, because we have a big role to play. And I believe that uh, by the time we meet again, uh, the coalition will be able to tell us uh, that we have been able to achieve phenomenal results. Thank you very much.